There are lots of amazing fashion dolls out there, but every now and then one comes along who makes waves and changes everything. And I really genuinely think that Jean Marshall is one of those dolls. For many collectors out there, she's not just a doll, she's the doll. Here she is, I'll be talking about her today. Mel Odom was the designer of Jean and he started her concept way back in 1991. He started out with just a drawing. And from there, he went to ideas about what size she would be, how she would look, what her shape would be. And she was the first fashion doll to really take that 1 4 or 16 inch size. That is my passion and is the passion of a lot of collectors out there. This is the doll that started it. Um, he, from his concept drawing, he printed out lots of designs, lots of different sizes, and he picked that one fourth size as being bigger than Barbie, a great size to hold, a great size to dress, um, and something more than just a toy. And I guess this is where, for me, the idea of the collectible fashion doll was really born. The first Jean Marshall, who's the one I'm holding right now, this is Premiere, she was released by the Ashton Drake uh, Galleries in 1995. So it took five years, or well, nearly five years, between that design idea and the creation of this first doll. And in that time, Mel Odom worked with sculptors um, and creators, and he uh, got the contract with the Ashton Drake Galleries to produce these dolls. And a few jeans came out in 1995, and then that started, I guess, the revolution I'm talking about, which continued producing jeans for more than 20 years to come. When Jean was first released, her initial sales actually weren't that great. And I think that's because she was so different from anything that had come before her, as you can see, and so different from anything else that Ashton Drake were releasing at the time, because uh, they're best known for the porcelain dolls and very much those display pieces that they produce, um, as well as uh, nowadays producing some, you know, more play dolls, baby dolls, things like that. Uh, this was a really different idea, um, but they did some clever marketing and after making this particular doll uh, quite limited, they did manage to make her a hit and she really took off. And the Ashton Drake Galleries continued to produce her for um, just over 10 years with many, many different releases in that time. When she first came out, she was like an early Barbie doll. She had just jointing at the shoulders and at the hips and at the hips, her legs only swing forward and back with this early one. But as they continued, there were some changes. Uh, first of all, jointed knees and then jointed elbows. And then later on, when she was no longer being produced by the Ashton Drake Galleries, Integrity Toys took her over and they gave her a fully jointed body, very much like a larger version of um, the Poppy Parker or Fashion Royalty dolls that a lot of people would know from Integrity Toys. Now, a lot of these early jeans from Ashton Drake, actually, they're very common. Um, because the Ashton Drake Galleries released them in such large numbers. There are heaps out there and they're really easy to get at great prices even now. This particular doll, because they did cut off her production, she's a bit harder to get. But even so, she's a pretty reasonably priced doll, often selling for around um, 50 or 60 US dollars even now. Um, and as I said, she's 1995, so she's nearly 30 years old now. There are some that are really hard. One of my favourite um, jeans that I own. It took me a long time to find one at a price that I was happy to pay. This doll is called um, My Favourite Witch. She is a convention doll from 1997. She's actually the only... Um, one of these really early jeans who I have and who I'm not letting go of. She's staying with my collection because um, I just love her so much. She has this wonderful layered um, Halloween style outfit, the spotted coat, the hat. She also has a broom and a, um, a mask which goes with her outfit. She is really hard to find um, and she will often sell for five or six hundred dollars. I didn't pay that much for her. As I said, it took me a long time um, to find one that I was happy to pay. There are some that are really highly collectible now and so if you have any of these uh, convention dolls you may find that you have you know really valuable collection behind you. Um, but if you're just looking to get started jeans can be a fantastic way to get a great collection of dolls this size or add to your doll's wardrobe without spending a fortune. 
These dolls represent a visual history of Jane Marshall through the years. There's one doll to represent every year that she was produced by the Ashton Drake Gallery. Jane Premiere, the very first Jane doll representing the lady at her movie premiere in her sumptuous black and gold gown with sparkles and glitter. From 1996 is Blue Goddess. She has a Grecian inspired gown that has a little split up the front and shoes that have sparkles that match the rest of the gown. She also highlights another feature of the Jean dolls, which is the really intricate hairstyles. Similarly, from 1997, we have King's Daughter, another doll with a wonderful hairstyle adorned with a little crown and a spectacular period style gown. From 1998, her hair is a little bit messy, but she's one of the more popular Jane dolls from this era. This is Destiny and she has a beautiful green gown uh, with some added ruffles. Final doll at the front is Breathless. She's from 1999. Her gown is adorned with all sorts of beads, um, including stars and so forth. This is one of the more intricate, um, intricately decorated sets from the time. Now, all the dolls at the front have the original Jean body with the stiff arms and legs. And all the dolls at the back, uh, who I'll be showing in a sec, have a slightly upgraded body. Dolls released from the year 2000 onwards tend to be a lot harder to find and cost a fair bit more. And obviously that gets more and more the later they are. Starting in 2000, I could only actually find one doll in my collection from the year 2000. This is a Toast at 12, who's the convention doll from that year. I've left her in her box because obviously that is part of the value of a rarer doll. She has bending knees, but she doesn't yet have the bending elbows. All of the remaining dolls have both bending e knees and bending elbows. The first one, is from 2001 and she's called a lady nose this doll has a fabulous hat as do many jean marshall dolls she also has a fur and that's another feature that is quite common the next doll in the blue gown is starlight canteen from 2002 i absolutely adore her blue gown with the extravagant piles of tulle you will notice that both she and the doll beside her have quite significant yellowing to their upper arms and their torso. This was a really common thing that happened in this era in particular, that almost every doll that came out of the factory over time has gone yellow. That yellowing is also very brittle and can lead to chipping. And you can see that this doll has a chipped elbow. You can't tell, but actually when she arrived, she very sadly, her neck had snapped off, her head was broken. But I used some epoxy putty and paint and attached that back together and I kept her original body. The next doll, who is from 2003, is Criss Cross. I adore the colour of her gown and I love the fact that these long trains are actually attached and are part of the gown rather than a separate um, scarf or shawl, as is very common. From 2004 um, and then the 2005 doll, these were some of the hardest for me to find. I did look for quite a long time for these two before I found one uh, at a price I was willing to pay. The 2004 doll is Cascade in blue. She has um, a fabulous mermaid style gown. Uh, with all these buttons down the front um, and a rhinestone feature. Finally, from 2005 is Mardi Gras Magic. Um, and again, she has a truly spectacular outfit. She has a velvet jacket over a dress uh, that has very heavy beading and then a tulle skirt, um, which flares out from these parts at the bottom. She also has a spectacular headdress and beautiful hairstyle, which again is really common of the Jean Marshall dolls. Jean also has several friend dolls. The first doll to be introduced was Madra Lord. She was introduced in 2000. Uh, this one on the left 
is the very first Madra. She's called First Encounter. You can see that she has bright red hair, which is classic of all of the Madra dolls. I don't have her in her original outfit as I found that it was a bit too large for my taste. So I've dressed her in a different jean outfit. The second doll along is Violet Waters. Um, she is the African-American friend of Jean Marshall and she was introduced in 2001. I love this um, version of Violet, which is called Torch Song. Uh, she has a really spectacular gown. I love that it is velvet the whole way down and has all of that beading. She also has a cute little hat that matches and is fully beaded to go with it. In the same year, Trent Osborne, the male companion of Jean, was introduced. I've just put them beside Jean here so you can see they're all exactly the same size. All of the friend dolls uh, were released with only the bending arms and knees body and never had the stiff arm body. Jean Marshall is most definitely an icon in the fashion doll world and someone who's never going to be forgotten. There are some amazing things about her. In particular, I just love the fashions. They're some of the most intricate and exotic pieces of art, really, that have ever been seen on a doll. In addition, her hair is just spectacular. Nearly every doll has a different hairstyle, different design, often adorned with these exquisite little pieces of jewellery and so on. She's also just a wonderful idea. I love uh, her figure that's very much that hourglass look. I love her backstory, um, the idea that she's in the cinema, that she has this uh, lineup of friends with her. But that said, she's got some things about her that are just a bit forgettable. Um, one, I guess, I struggle to say this, but her face, it's beautiful. The sculpting is beautiful, but Every single jean has essentially the same um, face makeup. And that's a pity because it means once you've got a few in your collection, you're essentially just looking at the same doll over and over again. The lipstick might be a different colour, but really when it comes to her, um, you know, her eye makeup, her eyeshadow, it's all exactly the same. You really don't see much variation, even in the lip colour until later on. There really was very little variation. Another gripe is her shoes. Um, they're these little hard plastic things, often with just a ribbon attaching them. They really don't live up to the rest of the outfits. Both the clothing and the jewellery is really great. Um, finally, her body. I said I liked her design. I like her body. I do, but I also dislike it. Um, I'm really not keen on the hard limbs. Uh, they make her essentially just a display piece. And I know that's what Ashton Drake, you know, have done, but Jean was different. And I think the wonderful thing about fashion dolls is that you can display them, but you can also play with them. You can also change their clothes. And Jean's body just doesn't really um, align itself with that. Not just when she has the, the stiff limbs, but even when she... Uh, brings in the bending elbows and bending knees. It's such a slight amount of movement that's added. They're not like, um, you know, the tonner bending limbs. They're not like the modern dolls. They really only bend a tiny bit. Um, and she also has an issue with that body, which is um, that we had this terrible yellowing in that era. So a lot of those bodies are both unattractive but come broken. And so really that is a pity. And now that I guess brings me to the good side of this story, which is that after 2005, we're gonna see Jean taken over by the Integrity Toys Company. And I know some people um, are collectors only of Ashton Drake. Now I love both eras and you can see behind me, I've got my um, Integrity Toys jeans up there, but I do feel like the Integrity Toys era took everything I've just said about what I don't like about Jean and fixed it all. And that doesn't mean that she's a perfect doll, but it does mean she comes pretty darn close. But that's another story to tell another time.